you got to get the baseline down, the lifestyle. So if you're dealing with toxins or an infection or whatever it is, mold in your home, you are going, your body's, your cells are going to be able to detox it better if your blood sugar is balanced. However, you might not be able to, it might take longer and you might not be able to get over the hump with just that alone, depending on how toxic your, you know, basically your overall toxic load, your infectious load, your stress, previous trauma, things like that, that you've experienced in life. And so you always want to try to get to, you know, obviously to the root cause and address that. And so I, I say, you know, the biggest things I try to work on right away are sleep, right? Trying to re- obviously get rid of the toxin exposure, reduce your toxin exposure, um, really sleep well, right. And balance your blood sugar. Like that's kind of the basics. And then from there, there's a lot of different things that we can work on. And so, um, you know, from a, a cellular health detoxification method, utilizing bioactive carbons, like fulvic humic acids, um, to help pull toxins out, bring, um, key minerals and nutrients into the cells, I think is really key. Uh, I would say the one the one mineral that I see people just respond, like they notice an improvement right away, magnesium, right? And I would say probably 90 to 95% of people that are dealing with chronic issues that I start on magnesium notice at least 10% improvement in their symptoms right away, like within the first week of taking some sort of magnesium. So I think that's really, really key. Um, I try to get them obviously out in the sun as much as possible. But, you know, a lot of cases we need to supplement with vitamin D as well, uh, low vitamin D. So vitamin D actually plays a really important role with opioid receptor activity. And so opioids, you know, we hear about it from like a, a farm, you know, a drug perspective, uh, the opioid epidemic and things like that. But opioids means endorphins. And so like when people exercise, for example, they release endorphins. It gives a pain relief effect. When you laugh, uh, you actually release endorphins. Well, actually just getting out in the sun, right? And and even just taking a vitamin D supplement actually can help increase endorphin levels in your in your body. And, and so those endorphins reduce pain. They help you feel better. They help improve mood. And so I've noticed that with putting people on a good quality vitamin D, um, you know, and, and magnesium is key for vitamin D absorption. So, you know, I would say magnesium first, but also vitamin D and getting in the sun as much as possible as well. Um, really powerful for helping to improve the endorphins, which makes them feel better, right? And as people start to feel better, um, it's easier to follow through with everything else that we talk about. So I think those things are are, are critical. Um, you know, liver support, I think can be really, really helpful. Most people, if you're dealing with chronic health problems, you need to support your liver. Um, you know, you, j- you just got to make sure that that's your major filtration system. Like it's your major drainage pathway. We need to open up all the drainage pathways, lymphatic system, right? All that. And so movement in general is is key for all drainage. We need to make sure the bowels are moving well, um, that you're hydrating well. So electrolytes in general, good hydration and electrolytes, super key. So good, clean, filtered water, reverse osmosis, distilled, um, you know, something really clean as far as water. So you're not getting a whole lot of toxins in your system, adding in electrolytes. And you could just do it with like a good salt, like Redmond's real salt or something like that. Put a little bit of that in your water, put a little bit on your tongue and drink that. That actually, believe it or not, the salt, the sodium itself from a good quality uh, salt source is actually antihistamine. So a lot of people are dealing with histamine intolerance, mast cell. Um, That actually will reduce some of that histamine. The hydration is really key. Um, So that helps move the bowels, helps the lymphatic system, getting out moving, even if it's just walking. Um, just getting out and moving your body, super, super key. Um, we talked about magnesium, vitamin D. We talked about those bioactive carbons, how important those are, liver support. So you got herbs like milk thistle, burdock, dandelion, ginger. We say bitter is good for your liver. So any sort of bitter tasting herb, parsley, um, which is one of my favorites. I, I eat par- some parsley every single day. I love it on like salad or on meat. Um, tastes great. And it also helps freshen your breath, right? A lot of good benefits there. And it's great for liver. Dandelion, really, really good. Ginger. So drinking ginger tea um, can be really good. Or just even munching on a little bit of ginger root, which will actually activate the digestive juices, stomach acid, bile, pancreatic enzymes, help you digest your meal more effectively, activates the vagus nerve when you do that. So ginger is great. Um, I like radishes as well. Um, Really good for for liver function. Artichokes, uh, another really, really good one. So any sort of bitter cilantro would be another one. Milk thistle, you know, we think about supplements, hard to get milk thistle. At least I've never, I don't ever remember consuming milk thistle, right? 
but I, I take it in a supplement form. It's probably the most well-researched uh, herb for liver cell regeneration and supporting liver health and also helping thin the bile and allowing for good, healthy bile flow, which is key for eliminating toxins, right? So our liver deactivates the toxins, but it's got to get rid of them. And that's how it do what it does through the bile. And then that turns into feces, you know, and we poop it out. We need to be pooping once or twice a day at least, right? To remove all the toxins. Whatever you ate the day before should really be, the waste of that should be out of your system within 24 hours, okay? If, it, if it's not, it sits in your system, rots and putrefies, and releases a lot of endotoxins, which drive up inflammation in your system. So if you ate lunch at, let's say you finished lunch at one o'clock yesterday, ideally the waste from that lunch is out of your system by one o'clock the next day. Okay. So you need to be, if you eat three meals a day, you probably should be pooping at least twice a day, right? Um, in order to get the waste uh, from all of that out of your system. So super key, you know, you, we need to make sure we're opening up all those drainage pathways, supporting our system. I think that's, that's really, really key from immune health perspective, a bunch of things that I like. Um, I have a product called Immunocharge and I designed it when I was researching, for example, COVID, right. And all the different things that were working best for COVID, I put all of them N acetylcysteine, which is glutathione support, um, selenium, zinc, magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K2, um, what else? vitamin C. And then we also have resveratrol and quercetin, which I find to be really effective. And if you have clinical dosages, quercetin, usually about 500 milligrams twice a day, something like that. And, uh, and, or 250, 250 to 500 twice a day. And then resveratrol, like hundred milligrams twice a day. Those are really powerful for reducing histamine as well, right? Along with vitamin C and, and acetylcysteine reducing histamine, helping improve mast cell uh, formation, and also helping preventing against things like cytokine storm, right? Which you learned about with COVID and uh, how the body reacts to, you know, viral infections when they're, you know, going out of control, when they're, when they're spreading fast. And so it helps to balance all of that. I think that's, that's super key. So those, I don't think necessarily are my, my first step, right? Although in some cases they can be, but, uh, but I think those are really super supportive compounds, uh, you know, to get into the system, especially to support your immune system, help balance and regulate your immune system. So many people have either an overactive or an underactive immune system, meaning overactive, it's reacting to everything and uh, causing a lot of collateral damage in the system, a lot of more inflammation, tissue damage, autoimmunity, or underactive where it's not killing off viruses. It's not killing off uh, bacterial infections. It's not killing off damaged cancer cells. And so we want balanced, potent and balanced immune function. That's really good. Like almost like if you're, you know, if you're, if you're, if you have got a bullseye and you're playing, you know, darts, right. You want something that doesn't need a whole lot of darts, right. One or two, and it's hitting that bullseye, right. And not hitting the wall. Um, you know, and so if we have a really potent, but balanced immune system, that's what ends up happening. It, it's, it conserves our energy and creates a lot less collateral damage in our system. So I think a lot of those compounds can be really helpful. Mm -hmm.